Hi guys, welcome back to Data Every Day. Today we'll be looking at a data set of personality traits, um, mainly from the, the big five uh, personality traits, and trying to predict whether a user will say that they uh, enj would enjoy watching a list of movies. Alright, so let's get started. Um, so, although this, um, this data set has uh, it has some ratings for um, certain movie IDs and then it has a list of predicted ratings for uh, various movies uh, so what we could do is um, grab the the ratings from here right that other users have have uh, rated and then ins change these um, change the, the ID to the rating that the users have given it here. But I'm actually just going to go with something a little simpler today, which will just be, we're just going to remove the, the movie data altogether. And we're going to see if, if, it, if we can get any success that way. I'm not sure how it will go. We'll see. So I'm starting off with these, this uh, norm, pretty standard libraries. We're going NumPy, Pandas, and then for pre-processing we'll use standard scalar and train test split from sklearn and then our models will be logistic regression support vector machine and an MLP classifier let me actually update this um, so support uh, logistic regression support vector machine and neural network models to make our predictions. Okay, so given data about someone's personality and a list of the predicted movie ratings, let's try to classify how strongly he or she will enjoy watching the movies on the list. So let's uh, load in our data. I'll run this and then load in our data using the pandas read CSV function. Let me get the file path right over here. So we're not going to use the ratings uh, uh, CSV. However, it may be an interesting exercise to use that. All right, so um, first thing, let's just get some. Uh, well, let's get some preliminary information about it. And uh, for null values, it looks like we're pretty good. I don't see any any nulls here. And uh, it looks like most of our stuff is uh, in numerical form. So we have a few uh, that are text labels, which we'll deal with. But most of our stuff is either floats or integers. And this will be what we are trying to predict, whether or not the user enjoy w thinks they would enjoy watching the movies on the list. And that's going to be based on uh, their personality traits, uh, a certain metric that has been used to provide the list of movies, uh, and these um, predicted ratings for particular movies. Now, I think let's try um, dropping that list of movies. So, actually, right up here, I'm just going to remove this part. Uh, given data about someone's personality, let's try to classify how strongly he or she will enjoy watching the movies, watching uh, movies on a uh, on a recommendation list. Alright, sounds good. So, let's start pre-processing the data. Alright, well first, just to double check about the nulls, uh, we'll check a sum of all the null values and get the number in each column. And you can see there are no null values in the whole set, so that's very good. And then we're going to uh, drop some unnecessary columns. <coughs> so we're going to drop user ID because that's not going to help us. Data dot drop user ID. And then we're also going to drop all the movie columns and predicted rating columns. So uh, movie 1 through movie 12 and predicted rating 1 through predicted rating 12. And you'll actually notice um, <coughs> if I show you data dot columns, this data set has 
spaces at the beginning of each column name, so I'll have to be sure to include those. Additionally, um, openness, oh, I mean, uh, sorry, uh, enjoy watching has a space at the end as well. Alright, <clears throat> so user ID does not have a space. User ID, movie one with a space. Uh, predicted rating one with a space. And now let me just indent these. I mean, I uh, put them on new lines just to make it nicer. So 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And let me just fill those in. So this will be 9, uh, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. And I'll just grab these, paste them in here. And then I'll grab these, paste them in here. Whoops, what happened? Uh, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so we should drop all of these, and we have to specify that we're dropping it from the column axis. Okay? Um, so now for our data set looks a little cleaner, and we're just going to use this simple data set to try to make our predictions. So, um, we need to encode these guys, right? So assigned metric and assigned condition need to be encoded. Uh, this one, or actually, let's take a look at a dictionary. So, um, say uh, encoding. Uh, we're going to make a dictionary, just to, just for a quick glance of a. It's going to map a column to a list of the unique values in that column. All right, so we have a column and a list of the unique values in the column for every column in data.columns, but only if data.dtype subcolumn equals object. So this is saying uh, we're going to get a list of all of the uh, non-numerical columns and their unique values. So there's only two assigned metric and assigned condition. And we can take a look at what kind of data is in each of those so we know how to encode them. So on the top, you can see this is a, a nominal feature because there's no ordering between these values. right? But down here, our assigned condition is considered an ordinal feature. Now, uh, if we want to order this, we notice that there's actually this default value. We don't know where to put that. So um, I think a not too bad way of doing that is let's take a look at the mode. So assigned condition dot mode. And you can see it's high. So most of the values are high. So I think it makes sense to put default right below high uh, because the default would probably um, move closer to the mode rather than towards zero. So what we can do then is define an ordering, condition ordering, which will be uh, just a list of all the uh, condition values, but in order that we want them. So low, note these also have spaces at the beginning, medium, high, and actually before that we have default. Alright, good. So now uh, we should make our encoding functions. Now I like to use functions. You could use the um, sklearn encoders, encoder objects, but we're going to go ahead and make two functions. One will be uh, ordinal encode, takes in a data frame, uh, and an ordering. Actually, we also need a column name. And we'll have one called one hot encode. Takes in a data frame, a column, and a prefix. All right, so for here, actually for both of them, let's start the same way. df equals df.copy. Because uh, we're going to make, it, we don't want to modify in place, so we're making deep copies of the data frame, and we're, at the end we're going to return the data frame. 
So for ordinal encode, we're going to apply a lambda function to the given column that will take in some x, which will be one of these values, and it's going to return ordering.index of x. So here's the ordering, right? Uh, let's say we get the value medium. We check the index of medium in the ordering that we gave it, and that would be 1, because we have 0, 1, 2, 3. So medium will become 1, anything that's default will become 2, anything that's high will become 3, and so on. So uh, we all we have to do is say df sub column equals that. And that's and we're done with that function. For this one, we're going to make uh, a dummies data frame that will be pandas.getDummies of the column of our choosing. And uh, the dummies is just going to one hot encode the column for us, right? And it's going to make it a separate data frame, which we then have to concatenate uh, onto the original data frame. So we're going to concatenate df and dummies on the column axis. And then that will be our new df. All right, and then when we're done, all we have to do is drop the original column from which we created the dummies. So drop column, axis one. All right, so now we have our functions. And we can use this, this and this to um, encode our, our data frame. So our original data looks like this. We're going to apply ordinal encoding to assign condition, and we're going to apply one-hot encoding to assign metric. So data equals ordinal encode uh, data assigned condition and condition ordering, which we specified here, and data equals one hot encode data, whoops, um, assigned metric and prefix, which is what we're gonna just, we're gonna have a prefix on the, yeah, I actually forgot to put that here, prefix equals prefix. So a prefix will just be the, the prefix on the dummy columns. And we'll just make it M for metric. All right, so I have to update this and then run that. Now if we look at data, you can see we have, you know, we actually didn't need a prefix here, but it doesn't matter. Um, the M just shows that it came from the metric column originally. So we have new dummy values uh, for the metric column. The original metric column is gone and the assigned condition column has been encoded into values from 0 to 3. So uh, now with this we are ready to scale, split, and train our data, uh, train our model. So uh, let's do that. We'll say uh, splitting and scaling and then we're gonna make a Y will just be data sub uh, enjoy watching. Remember there's a space at the end of this one too. Okay, and then X will be data dot drop enjoy watching. Axis one. Okay, now we're going to make a scalar object, which will be the standard scalar from sklearn, which will just give it a mean zero and variance one. And X will be scalar dot fit transform X. Then we will split it into train and test sets. Tr x train, x test, y train, y test equals train test split, x y with a train size of 70%. And why don't we give it a random state, 42, so we can reproduce the uh, random shuffling that it, pr that it provides. All right, now we will train our models. And we're gonna use three models. Uh, logistic regression model. Uh, so this will be logistic regression. Then we'll have a S support vector machine model, which will just be FC SVC. We'll give it a inverse regularization strength of one. And then uh, we'll have a neural network artificial neural network model, which will be the MLP classifier. And we'll specify the hidden layer sizes here. Uh, let's just, since it's a pretty simple data set, we'll just make a 16 and 16. 
All right, and then we can score the models uh, well, in the accuracy values. So log accuracy will be log model dot score on the test set. And then do the same thing, boom, boom. This one for the support vector machine, so SVM model, and, and this one for the neural network. And then. Okay. Oh, what happened? It's not fit. Oh, we didn't fit it, of course. <laughs> Sorry. Log model dot fit x train y train. Okay. Then we'll just do that for the SVM and the ANN. Okay. Now we got this. All right. That's done. And now we can. Uh, why don't we compare it with Plotly? So actually import plotly express here plotly dot express as px and then down here uh, say results uh, we'll make a bar chart that will take on the x we'll have um, logistic regression Support vector machine and uh, neural network. Then for Y, we'll have uh, log accuracy, SVM accuracy, and ANN accuracy. Then we'll give us some color will just be the same as X, so we give the legend. And then we will uh, have some labels for the axes, uh, which will, X will be model, and Y will be uh, accuracy. And we'll just give it a title. Model performance, and uh, model accuracy. All right. Uh, let's just make that a fig and then fig.show. Uh, I actually spelled it out. What's wrong with me? <laughs> All right. And you can see we did not do so well. Uh, well, actually, I don't know. We have 50% accuracy with the logistic regression model, and the other ones uh, performed worse. Let's see if we actually can change a few of these parameters. Uh, maybe we can get some better performance. Maybe make this uh, 10. And no, neural network went down significantly. Support vector went down even less. Uh, even. All right, let's try it with just one layer. And make this 0.1. Uh, yeah, nothing's beaten the logistic regression. Um, all right. Well, I guess that you know it's not as bad as you think, because um, I mean, we have uh five possible classes, right? We're trying to predict a rating from one to five. And what's one over five? It's twenty percent. So guessing 50% accurately is a lot better than taking a random guess. So, you know, it's not perfect. It's certainly not amazing. Um, but it's definitely better than just making a random guess. So, you, you know, take it as you will. Uh, maybe we could have gotten a better accuracy if we had included the movie data, but we chose not to here. Um, but I guess that sums up today's video. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell and leave any comments you have in the section below. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a fantastic day.